What's up, freaks? Don't steal my shit. What's up, freaks? Stop stealing my stuff. That didn't hurt. I don't steal your little no excuses, psychotic little scream you do at the end of the workouts. <laughs> so don't steal my stuff. And you quit causing trouble. You're lucky the camera wasn't rolling two seconds ago. There was like just a circus show going over here. <laughs> anyway, let's we're, take this serious and professional. And on top of that, what do I bother working out for when you two little freak shows, your dome is blocking my whole arm. What was the point of me even getting a pump on with these bands? I have a whole set of bands here to get pumped on before we get on camera. And your dome is blocking my whole shoulder and arm. I have to sit here like this so you, my arms don't get blocked. All right, welcome to Breaking the Cycle, episode number two, with myself, the Freak, with Tyson and Midge. We are here for episode two, and it's Breaking the Cycle. Breaking the Cycle is a live show on how to be a positive male role model and lead your freak family by breaking the cycle and changing the entire trajectory of your family tree so you can become the type of man that one day your son would want to become and the type of man that one day your daughter would want to marry if you let her ever let her out of the house before she was 40 years old, which I'm not, so we don't have to worry about that. But anyway, you don't worry about that little one. We'll get to that in another point. <laughs> All right, breaking the cycle. So here's the thing. We were, we, before we even started this episode two, we'll get into the, the, to the actual episode first, but we were, when we were making, creating this show, the three of us, they would get on my calendar. They would go into Google Calendar and, and they'd create stuff. I would see shit pop up on my calendar like like going to Home Depot and stuff. Once they figured out how to Google Calendar, and they knew it would pop up on my calendar. So we would have meetings for this show just to prepare for it. And in those meetings, what are you smirking at? Yeah, you're the one that keeps going, jumping into my calendar. I see all kinds of shit pop up. And you know when you put that stuff in my calendar, that it blocks off those hours, that I only have those hours available when someone else tries to schedule stuff because I have shit for you for like Home Depot and build Legos and all that stuff. Yeah. Build Legos is for me. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Play with little Barbie dolls. So I'm sitting on the floor playing with a bunch of pink Barbie dolls instead of going to make some damn money. But anyway. Any- the show is now called Tyson. Stephen Mitch. No, it's called Midge. This is what I have to deal with. This was what our meetings were about, about what we are going to call the show. He wanted to call it what? Tyson. Stephen Mitch. No, it's called Midge. Awesome. Awesome. This is this is what our meetings are about. They were very structured, very professional meetings, as you can see. Just look at this one. Trying to act like, oh, little miss, sweet little innocent. This is like a little demon child. Just look at her. Just guilty as fuck as hell. <laughs> look at that face. It's like a it's like a living, breathing Annabelle. Like if Chucky had a twin sister, that's what we do is right here. Causing more trouble. Today's word is gonna be pre- the word and the theme of today's show is going to be protecting, being the protector, the protector of the family, and teaching that to your children and, and breaking the cycle of, of, of lots of things. We're going to get into it on a deep level. We're going to get into some serious topics here, like serious conversations and topics. So before we get, we, we, we figured out the name of the show that it was called Breaking the Cycle because that's what it's all about. Breaking the cycle from shit that people people's had a, a bad childhood, so what do they do? They create those same habits and they continue with the bad uh, continuation in their family when they have kids and the cycle goes on and on and on and that's just fucking stupid and yes i just said the f word oh my god swear jar swear jar they want to start a swear jar they I'd want to start rich. a swear jar how much money do we have to put in every time there's a swear or whatever a swear is One. Ten dollars. One dollar. One dollar. One dollar. Ten dollars is a little excessive, don't you think? One dollar. Five bucks. One dollar. Five bucks. One dollar. If we did a dollar, if we did a dollar, if we did just a dollar, let's just say a dollar. If we did a dollar and so what, you guys would split the jar at the end of the month? No. I take all. No. It we'd split it fifty fifty, which means your bank account would probably be empty along with all your savings. All right, it's getting dark and something's going on. So keep going. So if if we did it and we did a dollar, how much how much money do you think you would have at the end of the month? For every bad word, I think maybe a thousand or no, maybe. like twenty, thirty thousand yeah. in a month. Yeah, yeah, thousand dollars. Yeah, maybe even a little more. Twenty, thirty thousand dollars in a month. You think? It's yeah. getting lighting because the sun is going down and we're getting less light. And we can set this light up so that's a little better. So you can see this little fluffy hair. Hair is looking awfully fluffy, Midge. Awfully fluffy. 
fluffy. Midge, you're going to wear makeup and, and high heels and dresses when you're older? Yes. No. And all the goops. You can put all the goops on your face and all that paint, paint and all that stuff. Looking, walking out the house looking like Pennywise. No. Why not? Because it's creepy and goopy-ish. Creepy and goopy-ish. All right, so let's keep rolling. So they want to do a swear jar. Yeah, that's a scam that these little kids have. <laughs> I almost lost, lost another fucking ooh, dollar. And you know what? I've had people say, oh my gosh, you curse in front of your kids. Like, listen, let me tell you something. If the worst thing you do is say a couple of sounds that come out of your mouth, and that's the worst thing you do for your kids when you happen to be spending your, the entire day with them and more time than anyone I know we kind of spend together. I think I spend more time with these little two freak shows than anyone I know. You're kind of off Instagram a little bit, so we'll scoop your little butt over a little bit. You don't have to get down. You could have just slid over your butt on the chair. Now you're going to have to get a ladder to get back up there, you midget. So if the worst thing that you're doing is some bad sounds that are coming out of your mouth, that's a pretty bad damn... Exa think about it. That's Swear. A... What? I didn't say anything. You said... D damn? Yeah. I'm going to get... Damn should be at least a fit, uh, like a 25 cent word. That shouldn't be a okay, dollar. Fine. Like the good cent. ones. The good ones should be the dollar. But damn or like stupid. Where's ass? Ass is like a 50 hey. cent. Ass is like a 50 cent, I think. You have tons of money to put in swear jars. We probably aren't going to even need like 10 swear jars. 10 swear jars going to run out of space? We need even like 20 no, we're gonna need 25, 50, 75 dollars. But yet you two still know the difference to think for yourselves and not use those words yourselves. Amazing how that works out. If you teach the right values and talk about breaking the cycle. And they know not to do that. I know this one. When she's older, is going to be worse than me. I could just tell. She's just, look at it. She's just waiting for the chance. When she's older, she's going to be like a drunken sailor with the way she's talking. All right. Anyway, today we're talking about protect, protecting, being a protector. And last week, we didn't even have a show. Last week, we didn't have a show because I was at the project. And the, and the funny thing is that these little freak shows. Wanted to do Zoom. Yeah. The little freak shows were asking me. What you ask me? When can we do Zoom when you're at the project? You didn't even ask if we could do it. You didn't ask, can we do it? You just said that we should do it. Not that we should. You just assumed that we were doing it. Like since I was going to be away, I was going to be off the grid at the project. I'm out there in the middle of the, the jungle, just torturing fools and breaking down bitches and turning them into beasts in Swear the project. Are... Shit! Oh, damn it! Oh, fifty oh. cents. Fuck. All right. <laughs> yeah, you two like this. I'm gonna be rich. This is awesome. I'm gonna be Great. rich. Okay. No, I. You're not going to split it? Nope. Tyson yes. will pull a scam. He'll be like, you know what? Let's just put all our money together so I could I could hold it for you so you don't lose it and I'll take care of it for you. Yeah, how and can we you trust need mommy? It, and, then, and then you end up spending it on some Legos. Then you convince her, no, this Legos going to be for both of us. And, and this then one he keeps for all the Legos for himself. So anyway, leaving for the project. They, they come to me right before I'm leaving Tuesday afternoon. You weren't in school yet, right? You didn't start school yet. It was like your last no. week of, of summer before school started. Oh yeah. And you and you say to me, so we're just what what you're like, just what time are we gonna do it on Zoom on Wednesday? Like thinking it's automatic, we're gonna do it. Like I thought that was so fucking cool. It was only the sec dollar. It was only the second week that we're doing it, and they just assumed and wanted to do it to sit here and do this show, probably because they just want to mess with me and see me have to just give dollars and dollars and quarters and fifty cents away. But it's just that I almost felt bad for it, realizing that I can't do it. Going to the project, can't do it. They just wanted to do it because somehow you get excited about this show. You guys like doing this show? Mm-hmm. Why? Yeah. Why? Because it's fun. Yeah, it's just fun. And we get to see you cursing them our swear jars full and we get rich. <laughs> you little troublemaker. Is it time for a joke? Lame joke? All right. What's the lame joke? Why are Rams in France so musical? Oh, God, I could tell this is going to be lame as hell. <laughs> What's hell? Hell's like a dime. Hell's not even like a, a curse. Okay. What is it? Because they have French horns. <laughs> that, I'm just going to bash my head again. She just bashed her head against a wall. That was so bad. That was so horrible. <laughs> that was a horrible joke. Okay, give us the, uh, the second. No, well, I'll save that one for later. Keep on going. All right. Stop taking those. All right, let's keep rolling. So in the project, we have a creed, which is basically the core values of the project. In And one of the lines of the creed is, I protect, protect those, those who can't, can't protect, protect themselves. themselves. Is there an echo in here or something? It's bad enough you two are blocking my arms. I got a pump on for no reason. I'm going to stand over here. 
Cut that shit out. I'm gonna stand here. There. So technically, that's how you're supposed to be standing. The Marines, this is how we had to stand all day long. Your head up, your chest out, your shoulders back and down, your thumbs along your sides, right here. That's really how you should be standing. That's your posture. Abs pulled in. Oh, that hurts. Yeah, I know why that hurts because you sit around too much all day like this. No, it's doing, because I left too heavy. And doing all this stuff. You really, that's how you should be standing. Your chest should be out, shoulders should be back and down the whole time. Oh, my. Like a soldier. You need to work on your posture. You're going to have bad posture. You're going to be screwed up like I me. I can barely see the lines. With the neck that's all screwed up. What lines? There are no, what are you talking about? That real, real slick, real slick there. What lines? Got that from the Russian. Real slick there. The ones that don't exist. Anyway, what lines let's keep. Oh my god. The ones on Instagram. Real that's what slick. She's talking about. Real slick. Just gonna cover up for you. All right, so in in the, the project, we have the creed, which is the core values of the project. In your business, you probably have core values also. But for some reason, no one puts freaking core values in their family. And you can't see it on, or in the Instagram, you can see it up here. There's actually a, a printed with some of the words from our core values of our family up there. But we're going to run you through our family core values. So I'm bouncing around there. We're going to run you through our family core values one by one. And then each week, we're usually going to dip into a different one of them. And today is going to be protect. That's actually core value number 11 of the 12 core values that we have. We call it the free code. It's a, it's a code that we live by as a free family. It's a good we're going to reread these. Because some of us can really start practicing a lot of these core values a little more. I'm not saying any names, but it rhymes with a, a word that starts with R and ends with an idge. All right. Ridge. Rhymes with. Oh. All right. So we're going to read through these core values and then we're going to break down. We're going to really break down the protect one. And, and as much as we're screwing around here and we have fun and we, and we talk a lot of shit, we're going to talk about a serious topic that you're probably going to be surprised that we're talking about with a, a 10 year old and a, a six year old Seven. that we're going to talk about here in a little bit. So stay tuned for that. It's something you probably need to hear. If you have kids, you need to hear this. You need to hear about the, these kind of things you should be talking about. Uh, we're going to get that in a second when it comes to protecting yourself, protecting those that can't protect themselves, protecting your family. So let's read through the freak code, the freak core values. Number one is discipline. I will maintain discipline as my foundation in everything I do and say, never make any excuses and staying in the green. If you don't know what staying in the green is, that's an inside family thing. That's why it's our free code. If your people have seen me speak before about emotional discipline, you know what staying in the green means. It's a powerful thing. But that is number one, discipline. Number two. Energy. I will bring infectious energy and maximum effort to every situation, conversation, interaction, and every room I enter. Number three. Attack. I will wake up early every day, take immediate action, never waste time, make stuff happen, and attack the day <laughs> and all tasks that come with it. Attack the day and all tasks come with it. The reason why they're laughing, it's not make stuff happen. See that? She's automatically programmed to know. It's make shit happen. That's literally what the core values are. Shit. Again. Shit times two times three dollars. So she knows. She sees that it says... Attack. I wake up early every day, take immediate action, never waste time, make shit happen, and attack the day and all tasks that come with it. She sees that and is reading that, that and knows it, that make shit happen. And automatically, you see, without hesitation, just says make stuff happen. But they're laughing because they know that it actually says make shit happen. But they know not. To... Would you two cut it out? This is bullshit. No. All right. Every time you two... Here, we're going to play a game. Every time you two think of a curse word... I need that. I get a dollar. I get a dollar. <laughs> How do you know I'm thinking? You're gonna. It's the honor system. You're gonna. Every time you think, your right hand's gonna go in the air. So just by you reading, thinking, <laughs> make shit happen, this. and you're saying make stuff happen. Just by thinking, make shit happen. You owe me a dollar. And you, I bet, if you had to give me a dollar for every time you thought of a curse word, I bet you'd owe me more than I owe you. Especially this little one. I know it. This, this one walks around. Fault. This one walks around her head saying like, fucking fuckity fuckity fuck fuck. I know you do. Look at you. I could tell by a little smirk. Unbelievable. Anyway, let's keep rolling. Number four on the freak code core values, family core values, is mind. Each one has a word and then a description. I will strengthen my mind every day. Reading, writing, meditating, reflecting, journaling. Because without a strong mind, a strong body is useful. Number five. 
Body. I will strengthen and build my body every day. Without a strong body, a strong mind is useless. Number six. Mission. I will put the mission and the family team before myself. Oh, yeah. I forgot to go back to the last one that you read, Midge. It, it, there was a part in there that said, uh, I will, were, were you on a attack, right? You're on attack? Yeah. Oh, yeah. I will wake up early every day. I don't see that happening for me. Yeah. I think someone needs the to. The earliest you ever woke up is like 3 a.m. No. Like 4 a.m. No, 3 a.m. Oh, for yeah. The hike. For the hike. hike. Yeah. Number seven. Listen. I will shut the fuck up. Listen first, then respond, not letting my emotions control me, considering all things I hear. And listen, all this stuff, listen, that's the word of the thing. All these freak code core values, as I'm reading them, I'm like telling myself in my head, like, shit, I need to do that one better. I need to, like, we're all, none of us are perfect. I screw up on every single one of these things. So that's why we, we, we go over these and read them and we're reading them and taking t turns reading them because we all need to improve on all of these. It's not just a little mid sleeping until 11 a.m. when she has to be at school at 8 but that's besides the no, point. No, we have to be at school at 7.50. Yeah. Number eight. Create. I will take risks, make bold moves, put myself out there, and contribute ways to make the family even more, success more successful, including money. Number nine. Win. I will maintain a positive attitude in all situations. Even if I fail, I will always find the win or lesson. And not quit just when you start to lose like a race or a challenge or a fight. Mm -hmm. Some of us need to tattoo some of these freak codes <laughs> on their forehead so they don't remember. And it's a no, forehead. No, it should be on the hand. It's a forehead, not a forehead. Because, it's but forehead. if it's on your it's forehead, forehead. It's, it, for, it's not far. It's literally right above your eyes. It's not it's far not away. So it's four. not four. You don't have, why doesn't it have a three head or a one head? You don't have four of them. Like one, two, three. Four. If it's four fingers. Some of us do have a four. You have like four segments of that big ass dome. <laughs> All right. Number 10. Confidence. I will always think for myself, believe in myself, figure it out, and make decisions that seem right. Number 11. Don't wave. That's what the creeps do. We're about to listen. We're about to have a serious conversation about creeps and perverts in a second. Number 11. Number 11. Protect. God. I will defend up, and protect the, the, the safety of this family at all costs. Read it again because this is the one of the day. This is our focus of today's show. Protect! I will defend and protect the safety of this family all right, at now all costs. Like now you're just saying like a jackass. No one can even hear you. Can you just say it normal like a normal human? I'm not a dog. Protect. Again? I was named after a dog, so you're the same name as a dog. I tell people that, they think I'm lying. You know when you were first born, I called your grandmother? Your English grandmother, and I told her your name was. She's like, No, really, what's his name? I'm like, Tyson, and Tyson Dog was still alive. She's like, No, really, tell me his name. And uh, how are you not gonna tell me his name? I said, His name is Tyson. She's like, No, really, tell me his name. She didn't believe that your name was Tyson. Oh my. Because I had a dog still named Tyson, and I had a kid named Tyson, because we're just freaks, and that's how we freaking roll. Number 11. Protect. I will defend and protect the safety of this family at all costs. And number 12. Freak. I will be my freak self every day. And it ends with, I, I am, am fucking awesome. awesome. The one time they were allowed to say that word was the first time that we created this freak code family core values that these two actually said the real word. One, no, it, remember how? One time they were allowed, whatever. One time they were allowed to just for this freak code. And of course, no excuses. We'll get to that at the end when you do that. So let's, we're gonna, the one we're going to focus on today out of that freak code is protect. And if you remember, that was one Tyson said. It was, I will defend and protect the safety of this family at all costs. And listen, when I'm away, first when I'm here, what do we do every night before we go to sleep? Security checks. We do security checks. We make sure all the doors are locked. The alarms are set. Weapons are at the ready. All, everything is ready to roll. The, the car alarms are set. All the windows are closed. The garage is closed. Everything is safe, secure. Lights are out. Everything is the way it needs to be. We do that every single night. Clearing the house, making sure it's all good. And when I'm away at the project, I'm gone for four or five days. So it's just these three freak shows left here. So who's in, who's in charge of security then? Me. Tyson. Crazy. Freaking 10-year-olds in charge of security. But it's because 
we practice this stuff together. We work on this stuff together. He knows to make sure the place is locked up, secure. The alarms are set. The cars are locked. The garage is closed. All the bars are where they need to be to block in doors and all that good stuff. The panic, panic buttons are ready. All that stuff. Our uh, defense mechanisms are put into place if you get catch the drift. And that's what it's about. When all four of us are here, though, because a four-man team is a powerful thing. Think of, like, the Navy SEALs. There'll be a team of just four SEALs, and they will outnumber... They will, they will overcome a, a force and an enemy of a much larger force because they're working with good communication, good leadership, good strategy and tactics, with effort and good attitudes, and they're, they're fighting and will, will overwhelm a force that thinks it's much, they're much larger than they are because of the way they're operating. So when all four of us are here, we think about, it. all right, if we had to break up into two fire teams, like groups of two for like shifts, for doing like security patrols or something, if we were just, the invasion was coming, how would we break it up? Would me, me and you could be partners, Dice? No, because we're the responsible ones. Mitch, Ooh. she would just fall asleep. <laughs> Mommy would be panicking. And you... So, so it couldn't be me and you. It, it couldn't be me and the Russian, because then it just leaves just the two little ones together. It couldn't be... So it would have to be me and Midge, right? Because she... So you'd be with your mother. Who would be in charge of that patrol? Tyson! <laughs> so... Even oh, you rolled your hand. You were thinking. What would be the second? Word. What would be the second Uh-oh. option? <laughs> if it wasn't going to be me and Midge on a team and you and the Russian on a team, what would be the sec- second best option? You think? Us two. It would be. Isn't that crazy? That'd be the second best option. The two of you together. Wait, why? Because, because you'd you're... still be. You and me can't be together. Yeah, because we'd be too responsible. So that so at least you and me have to be split up. Whether it's me and her or and me and the Russian. Mommy? Yeah, even though it's the two kids together, that would be better than you and me being together, which is nuts, but whatever. Anyway, so protect. We're, we're pro- training to protect. Who, who are you in charge of protecting on a regular basis? The family. But who specifically in the family? When you're out in your day and you're at school and you're out there, whatever, who are you in charge of protecting? Midge. Your sister, your little sister, you're in charge of protecting her. The funny thing is... He's in charge of protection. He's much bigger and stronger. But when it comes down to it, this one's like a little devious. Why is it pausing? A little devious psychopath, like a little a little honey badger is what she's like. Like a little scratching. Look at that. You can hear that from here. So when it comes down to it, there'll probably be a time when she's got to protect all of us because she's just a little maniacal. Very maniacal. Maniacal. So before I leave for the project, we have a ritual where... That the Saturday before, so we leave, I go to the project Tuesday. The Saturday before, we go to the shooting range and we go shoot all kinds of different guns. We get, we work on our marksmanship on a regular basis. We're going to start doing more often because we haven't been doing enough. So we do that. I'm sure you didn't just yawn. I know you didn't just yawn during a live show of breaking that people have died for less. Did you just yawn? You better come up with some real good Side note. right away. At the shooting range, I mag dump. Yeah. That's why we waste like $8,000. Yeah, especially the price of ammo. There's different types of people at the at the ranges. The safety violators who just wave their guns around and shoot people in the toe, and they're 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 waving their rifle around. Mag dumpers. And then there's the mag dumpers like him, who's just like forget about getting better at shooting. Let me just have fun like a video game and pop 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 and just mag dump and wasting just tons of ammo. Ammo is too expensive for that shit these days. Targets. 95% of the time. You did hit good targets with most of them. So nice. that that's a ritual before, like getting into that mode of right. I'm going out of town, not out of town, I'm not even far away, I'm only 15 minutes away if I had to come home, whatever, but I'm off the grid, I'm out there doing my thing, so we, we have that ritual of sharpening up our marksman skills, then we do a survival day, which we do in the backyard, what do we do, How, what is survival day, what kind of stuff we, we set up on survival day? Mountain house, tent, What's campfire, oh, delicious food that can last 26 years, oh no, 25 20, I was going to say, where the hell did you get the extra year from? I'm sure it could last 26. If it could last 25, I'm sure it'd be fine in 26. But it's a freeze-dried food that you make in like 10, 12 minutes. It's freaking awesome. We start a fire. We scratch to start the fire. We have different ways of starting fire, all the different methods we have. We have electric fire starters, obviously matches, waterproof matches. We have our survival gear where we just camp out in the backyard. We call it survival day with all of our tools and all of our gear and everything that we, that we, we need. We put the tent out there. But... This time, we actually had electronics for Survival Day. How? Because you two helped set it up. How do we set it up for to have electronics? What are these faces you're making? The electric generator. Couldn't and then put what into you... the giant solar panels. 
not even the, with the portable solar panels, not even the ones that are on the house. So, so these two freaks want to have their little tablets and have to watch the little movies at the nighttime. And the little, they even brought a, a lamp out and a fan into the tent My on hamsters. survival day. What kind of, what kind of hardcore survival day this is? So there's a fan on the hamsters they brought out there. So the way it goes is on survival day, they don't know when it's going to happen, but all of a sudden the purge alarm goes off in the house. If you never watch the purge, you are not a true American and you need to watch the purge. It's one of our favorite movie series out there, the freaking purge. So I set up the purge alarm and then what happens? We have 10 minutes to get everything out of the house. That Maybe be... even five minutes. Yeah. However long it's going to last, it's 10 minutes max. Sometimes it's 10 minutes 10 minutes ish. Isn't. Yeah, we said, I think it ended up being longer than 10 minutes because we, we need to get a couple extra things. But it's whatever, whatever you can get into the backyard in 10 minutes, and that's all we could use for the entire night. And that's for food, for even water, the water we're going to clean ourselves with, the water we're going to drink, the water we're going to clean the, 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 everything with, wash your hands with, all that stuff has to get out of the house. So we, you have to have backup water sources. You need to have survival type food. You need to know how to start a fire. You just have to set up the tent, but then also how to set up power in the tent. So... Listen, if you're prepared and you have the right resources, they took out an, a, a portable generator that we have that doesn't require gas. It's plug-in, but it, it's on, it has a battery, built-in battery, so it lasts for a certain amount of time. But you plug in the portable, what's it called, solar panel. So with the solar panels outside the tent, the generator is inside the tent. Now you can plug it. It has six outlets. has like 13 different things you can plug in at the same time into that generator. So these two have their movies and all their video games and all kinds of stuff they have on Survival. Day. Real rough Survival. Day. You two are really roughing it. What are you doing with these faces, you little weirdo? You two are really roughing it. You think you two can handle it without the electronics on Survival Day? Maybe for a couple weeks. Couple weeks. Nah. How the amount of stuff that we had outside in that ten minutes that we took out that we took out of the house. First of all, could all that stuff fit in my pickup truck? Yes. Yeah, easily. How how long? Just what we had with us, do you think we could survive off of? Just the oh, stuff we brought out of the house. A month at least. A month, definitely. I think three months. No. Because even one of the survival bag even has tons of seeds. If you had to grow some stuff, there was, we have those straws, right? We dug the water. One second. We dug the water into, we dug a hole in the backyard last time. We didn't do it this time. We forgot it this time. In mud and the water, the dirty, nasty, muddy water that we filled in a dirt hole in the, in the ground that came out of like the, Hose that went into the mud. We dug a hole. We take the straw and we drank the water out of it. Did it taste all nasty and muddy? It tasted exactly like regular water. It tasted exactly like. So it's a survival straw. You drink the water right out, and it purifies the water, cleans the water, like ninety nine point nine percent of all bacteria and all stuff. It might not get the coronas out, but it gets everything else out. And it's delicious. So this is how we're always preparing to be the protectors. So no matter what happens, we're always prepared. We're, we have these fires that happened here last year. Some bad fires out there. You see there's a hurricane now in the, the south. There's all kinds. Yeah, bad hurricane right now in Louisiana, New Orleans. Horrible the hurricane. So things, things can happen in any part of the world when you're traveling, when you're home. So being prepared for that stuff is all part of protecting. Protecting this family at all costs. No matter what it takes. Protecting the family. And you two need to know how to protect yourself, protect each other, which is why they also go to, to jujitsu. And they know how to deal with bullies. What do you What do you do if you see a bully picking on some kid and he's you know making fun of him, Tice or either one of you? What do you do? I go up there, even if it's a friend. What if, What if the bully is one of your close friends you hang out with all the time? You're just at his house last week, and now he's picking on some kid and being a bully. I school. tell him to stop twice, and if, and if they don't stop, then you it gets physical, <laughs> or you tell a no. You do what? Tell an adult. Nah. No, you sick. Nah. That you, good. That usually don't do once much. they're asleep, then you may tell an adult. It's get physical. <laughs> yeah, yeah, usually it's that don't do physical. nothing. They call it, they, they, they call the parents in, they make the parents come in, and the kid told his parents and all this other stuff. So what would you do? What would, what would then you do? Then get suspended. What would you do, Tice? I tell the kid two times to stop. What if it's a bigger kid, older kid? Twice your size, two grades above you, picking on some kid in your your a grade below you, some little weasel kid. The kid's just big. You're gonna go tell him to stop? No. You're not. Well, I yes, I tell him to stop. T two or three times. And then. The best way to 
fight a big person is to use jujitsu. Who said anything about fighting him? I'm just saying, I was asking you to do it. You're already talking about jujitsu. You're ready to choke a motherfucker out. Don't say that. Bad. Damn it. That's probably like $2 right there. Again. That's a bad. Damn. Damn's only 50 Shit. That's, that's a dollar. Damn it. Stop. This is unfair. This is unfair. You guys are outwitting me. Yeah. Yeah. I'm happy I'm getting rich. You're getting rich. There ain't no damn swear jar. If there's a freaking swear jar, I'll be broke. We'll be homeless. We'll be living off the mountain house food. Living off the rice and beans, like the people say. All right, we're going to switch gears here and talk about something pretty serious. And this is something we talk about, and, and we could talk about it. And it's something, listen, if you have kids and you're not talking about this kind of stuff with your kids, and we could talk about it here right on camera, but live, because we've talked about this stuff before. And I told these kids... The reason why we're going to have this conversation, and it's about creeps. It's about perverts. Whether it's older kids. Waving to people. Boys, girls, adults. It could happen at homes. It could happen at schools. It could happen at camps. About creeps that, are, that touch little kids. And it's a weird conversation to have. But you can see these two don't feel weird about because we've had this conversation before. And, and, I asked, and when I first asked them and I first brought it up. And I said, there's people out there, even adults, even older kids that touch kids in weird places. And would, and would, and I said, do you even know what that means, Midge? Touch in weird, would you, yes. did you, did you know what I meant? Yes. I don't even know how the hell you knew that. That's was just, that's just crazy. But so the re, the problem is people, I, I guarantee I'll get some comments. Oh, how could you talk about this with your kids live on camera? I'm talking about, because you know what, motherfucker? Because most, all right. Kill my flow with your pointing, making me nervous, to pointing at me. The problem is, you know when people talk to their kids about this shit? When do you think, Midge, that people talk to their kids about this stuff for the first time? This kind of weird, it's a weird conversation, right? It's not the most comfortable conversation, don't you guys think? It's yeah. like a little, little freaking weird. It doesn't even make sense how that can happen in the world, that an adult would touch little kids in weird, funny fucking places that they have no business touching them in. So, Midge, what do you, when do you think is the time that most people talk to their kids about something like this? Like something like, it's, it's horrible, right? It's disgusting. Yeah. It's horrible. It's fucking sick. When do you think is the time when stop? Because it's killing my freaking flow. Freaking is nothing. Freaking's like five cents. No, that's not a bad word at all. You don't. You can just say that whenever. Oh, all right, cool. So when do you think is the first time probably most people actually have this kind of weird conversation with their kids? After, After it happens. I asked Mitch. Oh. Because before we were on camera here, so I'll have to tell you. So this one's trying to act like he knows what he's doing here because he's a little con artist. I asked them earlier when we were having these conversations, we've had this conversation a couple of times. I said, when do you think is the time when, when parents first talk to their kids about weird shit like this? And Midge came up with the answer right away. She's like, after, after it already it happened. already happened like, to their kids. Think about it. Like, how, how freaking stupid is that to, to address this kind of stuff after it happens? Don't like, how, how dumb is that? That, that? That's what you wait for. Like, make them aware of it. And if you're watching this and you have kids... This, you should be, see how it's okay. What are you doing? You got the attention span of a doorknob. What are you doing in there? Gosh. Yet you know all the freaking answers. Somehow. Somehow. She comes up with like the brilliant answers like she just comes to her. You can't even snap your fingers. Mine's, mine are pretty good, pretty loud. Let's hear it, Midge. You used to be able to snap them. Just did. No, me. Oh. Mine are like thunder. I'm the best whistler. Mine are like thunder. Yours are like lightning. Yours are like a little mouse, like a little rope running across the floor. Anyway, what would you do if, if some creep adult was trying to touch you in some weird, funny places, Mitch? I'd yell for help and run for my life. And what else can you just add in there if you had to? Just Happy. stuff. Kick in the nuts. <laughs> Hell yes. A kick in the nuts. That's fucking awesome. That is fine. Now, I didn't even know what you were going to say. I just want to see what you guys came up Punch with. Punch him in the face and That kick was something I just came up on the fly to see what you come up with. There ain't many things to. <laughs> I, I was born without the facial musculature to smile. There's not many things that can make me smile, especially on a camera, except some shit like that. That's just fucking great. Hell yeah. Do what you got to do. Listen, you. My dad didn't teach me much. My dad taught me one thing ever in life. He never taught me anything. He didn't teach me nothing. You know one thing he taught I think me? I, yes. What? Don't become him? No. No. Oh. The first one to fight dirty wins. I don't know if he taught me that. Either he taught me that or some homeless guy on the subway taught me. I forget. But same thing. 
Could have been him on the subway. Anyway. Wait. Why would a homeless guy tell you that on the subway? I don't remember. It was just kind of a half a joke, kind of half a serious. I think it might have happened to something like that. The first one to fight dirty wins, meaning, like, something like that happens. That's a life or death situation, really. Even though you might not die, that's what will fuck you up. Like, if you're like, listen, I talk to men every day on the phone, whether it's talking about you know, with, with with coaching, with the, the project, talking about them join, possibly joining the project or potential candidates for the project. And you'd be shocked the number of men, grown men, who for the first time are even talking about it, that when they were kids, either older kids or older family members or older strangers, touch them in weird fucking places. It's crazy. Like a large percent of them. Pedro says, I think that one in four men or whatever, boys, were abused in some way, either physically, mentally, emotionally, or even like by creeps, freaking touching them and doing weird shit like that, which is, is fucking crazy. And you guys know what happened to Bedros and Aaron when they were kids. I told you that. They talk about it, so it's not like it's... A, and so it's obviously the percentage of the men out there. Like, so if you're not talking to your kids about shit like this and making them aware of it and letting them know ahead of time that that shit ain't normal and no kid can tell them, oh, you need to do this or I'm going to hurt you or I'm going to beat you up. I'm going to tell your parents or an adult telling you, no, this is normal. This is what you're supposed to do. You're going to get in trouble. You're going to get kicked out of this camp. You're not going to get this, this, whatever, whatever you talk, whatever you're thinking of, whatever situation. And, and I could, I'm talking about in schools, in camps, in freaking churches, in houses, in, it could be even family members, friends, families, friends, parents, every single one of those I've heard. I'm not even joking. Hundreds of fucking examples. Hundreds, personally, that I've talked to. Now imagine how much more is out there. It's fucking crazy. And you guys are making these faces because it's just, it's like mind-boggling, right? Like, it doesn't even make sense, right? Like, Tyson asked me, why would someone even think like that and do that stuff? Because they're fucking sick. They probably deserve to be publicly executed, right? I mean, certain people should be executed. I think those are some of them. Yeah. That's just weird shit. Because when it happens to people... When they're kids and they don't know what the fuck's going on and they grow up, stop Mitch, they grow up, it screws them up. Now they're screwed up their whole life. Like they're really traumatized their entire life. So you need, I'm challenging you parents out there, have these tough conversations with your kids because this is important shit. Don't have the conversation and tell them how it's not right and not normal after the shit happens. Let them be aware of it so they know, all right. This isn't normal. I'm not going to let this happen. I'm going to I'm gonna scream. I'm going to run for my life. I'm going to kick him in the nuts. I'm going to find a freaking weapon and fight dirty. I'm going to fucking shank a motherfucker if I have to, if this, if this shit's about to go down. What does down. that mean? Huh? What does that mean? Shank I do not know what that means. Do you play Call of Duty? Why do you play Call of Duty? That's only for, that's mature audiences only. No. Do you two mean? wouldn't play Grand Theft Auto, would you? No. Oh, no. That was, yeah, because it's like too violent. We, we definitely did not spend like eighty dollars for money in that. Yeah, we didn't. No, don't even think about. Yeah, very believable. Very believable. And on top of that, like think about it. we're talking about we talk about alcohol, we talk about drugs, we talk about guns, we talk about violence, we talk about terrorists, we talk about creepy motherfuckers that touch kids. Stop, Mitch. Very distracting. And I'm going Ruins broke already. I'm going broke already. We'll count them later. We'll rewatch it later and count them. And you can get your cash. Yes. Yes. You little suckers. And we talk about this stuff because it's shit that kids need to be aware of. Because you know what? One day, a kid that never saw a gun or was taught about guns or gun safety is going to see a gun. And what do you think they're going to do with it? Shoot it. They're going to be curious, right? Wow, a gun. They're going to pick it up and, and not follow in firearm safety rules and looking down the barrel to see what's down there. And that's how freaking stupid accidents happen. And we have pictures of us on the internet, right? Oh, yeah. Have you ever held a gun, Midge? Oh, yeah. Have you ever held a gun? Have you ever shot a gun? Oh, yeah. I've shot a real gun. I've and shot And we've taken video. pictures with guns. So we have some pictures that I put on Instagrams with, with us holding guns. And there's some... And it was awesome. There's some jackasses that talk about just because they're holding guns in pictures saying, why would you ever do that to these children? They said, do you two even know this? That people out there said you two are going to be... Serial killers? In, in, in prison for your life. You're going to prison when you're older. You're going to be serial killers. You're going to go and shoot up schools. That's what they said about you. Shoot up schools? Yeah. That's we what were, adults... We were just holding empty That's what these guns. freaking idiot, loser motherfuckers that are probably 50 pounds overweight sitting in mama's, grandma's basement. With, with the sitting there. Star- 
Wars t-shirt. They're tidy whities and they're Star Wars t-shirt with fucking cheese doodle stains on them. Tell like them, Fortnite. Telling us probably don't spend, and, and if they have kids, don't spend any time with the kids and don't have these type of conversations with the kids. It's going to tell me that you two are going to end up serial killers and in prison because you have a picture holding a gun. That you're, I bet you. That you're taught know. about, you're trained to, and you know the firearm safety rules, and you practice them all the time, and you practice, you go to the range, and it's under controlled settings. But because you're in a picture, they say it's disgusting, it's horrible, I'm a horrible parent. Yes, I'm a horrible parent for hanging out with my kids every single day for hours and hours a day, eating dinner together seven days a week. Like we, if you realize, you know we eat dinner seven days a week, pretty much, unless I'm away somewhere. And there's probably a 95% chance those people who said that we're going to be shooting up schools... They probably liked the picture. Probably did. Probably did. It, it's it's people that it's probably those people who are been traumatized from something when they were a kid and they didn't break the fucking cycle. That's what happened. If they do have kids, they're just like that cycle's gonna go on. Like talking, like putting that comments, like public comments about that. You don't know, it's nothing left on there. Doesn't matter. It's it's they're putting this on public comments on a picture or sending me private messages like like shut the fuck up. I'm like thirsty. Go get your own <laughs> shit together. Go get your own shit together. So it's just crazy. So have these tough conversations with your kids. Don't bubble wrap your kids. So when they go out to the real world one day and they're seeing all this and, and, and seeing this stuff, they're not overwhelmed by this. They're like, you know what? I was ready for that stuff. It's not going to affect me. I'm going to be fucking bulletproof. I'm going to have impenetrable armor to the nonsense and the bullshit and the disgusting shit around the world because I actually was taught to think for myself and learned about this stuff and was taught this stuff and, it, and know what goes on out there and I'm not going to let it affect me. The reason and, why they send you with bubble wrap is because when you get stabbed or shot, it'll go through. But if you have a bulletproof vest, it won't. Huh? All right. That makes absolutely no sense. That's almost as bad as your French joke. Oh, yeah. Is. I have another one. Oh, God. This one ought to be rich. <laughs> why do we always tell actors to break a leg? Chris, I can't hear you. Mold it. What? Why do we always tell actors to break a leg? Oh, my God. Why? Because every play has a cast. That's just dumb. <laughs> oh my gosh. I'm, I feel so sorry for you. Oh my That's god, just they get sad. They get worse and worse. You gotta every show, every episode, you gotta come with like two or three of your lame-o jokes. Okay. This is just classic. I bet you got tons of them, don't you? And this okay. one, this one and her knock-knock jokes. Those are even better. Oh, that she oh, sits I, on the phone with her grandmother. Her? Oh no. What does the janitor say when he jumps <laughs> out of the closet? I, I. Did That's this her one. joke. Oh yeah, you could. Stop say stealing it. people's thunder. Oh. You stole my what thing in the beginning. What does the janitor say when he jumps out of the closet? Supplies! <laughs> That's just the worst of them all. It can't get any better than that. On that note, it's time for us to go because they're getting delirious and their blood sugar is getting low. We got to go eat some protein and some dinner and, and refuel after our workouts and our training we did today. We got to get rolling. Listen, be the one. Make the decision to be the one in your family tree. To break the fucking cycle and stop repeating the same bullshit patterns that have happened for generations and generations. Break the cycle. Have these tough conversations with your kids. Let them know about this stuff so they can be aware of it so you don't talk to them after the weird shit happens. Make that make sure that shit doesn't happen. Break the freaking cycle. We gotta get rolling in case no one told you yet today. You are fucking awesome. You are fucking awesome, man. You are fucking awesome. No excuses. Anything you two freak shows want to finish off with. No! Very normal children. I can't imagine where they get it from. I also can't imagine why none of the neighbors invite us over for any freaking tea and biscuits because we're freaking crazy. Hey, but so we'll talk to you later. You are freaking awesome. No excuses.